The Middle East is imploding. In the past few years, there have been violent revolutions, military escalations and armed conflicts in Egypt, Libya, Syria, Iraq and more. Iranian proxies are undermining regimes as conventional armies are losing ground to terrorist groups like Hezbollah and ISIS, resulting in the crumbling of Arab states. Some have argued that this turmoil has enhanced Israel's security. The disintegration of the Syrian and Iraqi armies, which used to pose a major threat, and the peace treaties with Jordan and Egypt now enable Israel to make territorial concessions, they contend. Is Israel really in a position to make concessions on its borders? The Western Israel must now prepare to defend themselves against a new kind of enemy. The terrorist groups gaining power in the Middle East today are not like those of the past, comprised of small secretive cells carrying out hijackings, shootings and suicide bombings. We're now confronting terror armies. The British army faced this threat in Iraq and Afghanistan, and Israel is facing these threats along all of its borders. That's why strategic depth as a key to defensible borders is still crucial as a first line of defense. Hamas in Gaza has evolved from an underground terrorist group into the ruling regime and a formidable military force, with army bases, former lines of command, fighting brigades, special forces, including naval commandos, offensive tunnels, thousands of rockets, anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles. The same goes for ISIS and Hezbollah, who have armored vehicles, advanced artillery, missiles, drones, and more. Hezbollah, which is deployed along Israel's northern borders, has already threatened to invade the Galilee in the next war. All of that is a proof of the importance of having defensible borders. While some of these terror groups may fight each other, they still share the common objective of destroying Israel. They flaunt violations of accepted humanitarian norms that oblige all those involved in armed conflict. Another prominent force which has taken advantage of the Middle East turmoil is Iran. In Iran's attempt to achieve regional supremacy, the Islamic Republic has financed, armed and mobilized expeditionary forces to topple governments, seize territories and tighten their imperial grip across the Middle East. We're witnessing this Iranian-backed expansion in Yemen, Syria, Lebanon and in other places. And these forces are currently encircling Israel. Once Iran becomes a nuclear threshold state, the escalation of terrorism against Israel will only rise. Iran supplies Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah with advanced rockets, weaponry and know-how. Once it becomes a nuclear threshold state, Tehran will be able to back Hezbollah and other Shiite militias with a complete impunity. As countries would hesitate to retaliate in fear, such actions may escalate into a nuclear war. In addition, we cannot rule out the options of Iran transferring nuclear technology to its Middle East proxies. Since 1967, the Jordan Valley has served as a formidable geographic barrier, protecting Israel's narrow 40-mile waistline from the east. These steep slopes, which are controlled by Israel, create a 4,000-foot-high geographic barrier which is difficult to penetrate. This ridge that we see here is a, a topographical obstacle between the Jordan Valley and the main center of Israel. And as you can see, it's very hard to cross it with a, a big orbit or big formation of uh, tanks, etc. And there are only five uh, passages, so it's easy to defend. And the area is wide open. So you can deploy here to a division. Uh, once it's uh, uh, needed, and uh, in our region it's needed every, some, uh, uh, every couple of uh, years. We need this defensive border, the Jordan Valley, because it gives us, first of all, the minimal strategic depth of only 40 miles between here and the Israeli seashore. It gives us a decent way to protect ourselves if there will be an attack, if an attack from the outside, and it gives us also the uh, ability 
to fight terrorism effectively. If Israel don't control this area, the Iranians will just enter it in the same way that they enter South Lebanon, the same way that they provide help to the Hamas in a, a Gaza. Infiltrators could then easily reach the western slopes of the mountain ridge, which overlook Israel's entire coast. The large population centers around Tel Aviv and Haifa, strategic industries and military facilities. Israel's main transportation arteries and only international airport Ben Gurion would become easy targets. Given this background, it is easy to understand why the vast majority of Israeli security authorities have strongly opposed concessions in the Jordan Valley. <laughs> Moving up north along the Jordan Valley, we reach Mount Hermon and the Golan Heights, from which Israel can watch the Syrian civil war unfold. Prior to the 1967 war, this kibbutz, like many other Israeli villages and towns, was bombed and shelled on a regular basis by Syrian army forces deployed on this elevated area overlooking the Sea of Galilee. All the arguments from the last 25 years that said Israel could safely withdraw from the Golan Heights have been exposed as based on false premises. Had Israel withdrawn from the Golan, we could have easily had ISIS and Al-Qaeda bearing down on the Sea of Galilee and northern Israel. Iran is also making gains on the Syrian border in the Golan in order to turn it into a base for attacks against Israel as part of its national security doctrine that sees value in engaging Israel in constant conflict. Senior Iranian and Hezbollah officers were recently targeted, allegedly, by Israel as they made their plans on the Syrian border. Therefore, retaining the Golan Heights is clearly a vital Israeli security interest. Even in the day of, uh, of phenomenal technology, and even any foreseeable technology, does not remove the need to have um, borders that are defined and that can be defended. Did anyone predict the Arab Spring? And once it started, did anyone predict it would turn into an exploding chaos? Israel cannot plan its security around the snapshot of the current Middle Eastern political situation. We must ask, what will the region look like tomorrow or a decade from now? We don't know. That's why Israel must assume that its need for defensible borders will always be relevant. In an unpredictable and constantly shifting Middle East, one factor remains constant. Defensible borders are vital to Israel's security.